Absolutely. I think uh, one thing you mentioned earlier is, you know, you, you feel like the city is not heading uh, towards the right direction. Can you maybe uh, elaborate on that? Like, you know, um, what are the, uh, the things that, you know, you're really concerned, uh, concerned about? Well, two big factors that come to mind right off the bat is our, the way that we've been um, uh, not respecting or disrespecting our law enforcement and police department. Mm -hmm. uh, continued efforts to defund them. And now we're facing a policing shortage of, mm -hmm. of uh, personnel. Absolutely. We have slightly over 1,000 officers left on the force. Uh, we lost about 200 officers last year during 2020 and another 70 already this year. Uh, of a department that typically has about 1,400 officers uh, and research has shown over the years that a city this size needs to have about 1,600 officers to really perform adequately. There's always com comparison between Seattle and Boston. Uh, both cities are about the same population, the same size, but mm -hmm. Boston, Boston actually has twice as many police officers as we do. Uh, and so to, able, to be able to get fast response times, there's an article in the paper today about the response times are slowing down, getting longer and longer because we don't have enough personnel to go out there and take care of the issues and, and protect and service the way they are sworn to do. Uh, so we've, we've been losing officers. We have uh, a bunch of elected officials who are in favor of defunding the police. I'm not in favor of defunding the police. I'm all about training and retraining and continually training the police to be the best that they can possibly do. You know, I don't know if you know, but my background uh, for 20 years was as a professional athlete in the NBA, uh, playing basketball. And as an athlete, we trained every single day. You know, That's now I never made perfection. You know, I was never perfect. I still made mistakes, even with all that training. And our officers are no different. Uh, I just heard uh, just uh, a couple of days ago that, you know, the typical officer only receives about four hours of training. Uh, throughout the year, the course of the year. Uh, and that's the, you know, the one-on-one -on -one confrontational trainings and things they have to de-escalate people like this. Mm -hmm. I want the officers get at least that amount of training, four hours every single month or every single quarter at least. Bring them in off the streets, keep them trained, keep them uh, really sharp and be able to work with them in that regard. So a police officer, policing is a big, big issue. And the other thing that really is, uh, you know, gnawing at my craw is uh, our homeless issue. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, we have elected officials that refuse to do anything about it except throw a lot of money at it. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, nearly a billion dollars over the last decade on our homeless issue, and it's gotten nothing but worse. Now, mm -hmm. again, last year was COVID, so our homeless population grew by 50% on the street. Our capacity in shelters shrank by about 35% due to social distancing and CDC measures. I get all of that. Mm -hmm. But once we get back to normal, whatever normal is, uh, we've got to be able to expand our sheltering space, ex expand our affordable housing, build more tiny homes, and be able to get our homeless population off the street and into a safe environment that they can receive services that they need. I'm all about intervention. I want to, I want to find out each and every one of these homeless folks, what mm -hmm. exactly is going on with them. And if they have mental issues, we'll get you some services. You have uh, drug problems, we'll get you services. Uh, you know, all kinds of different things. Criminal elements, you know, we'll get you cleaned up. We'll get you back in your feet. Job training, we'll get you those kind of services. That's what I'm about. Those are the solutions that it takes to finally solve this kind of thing. I don't want to keep spending $200 million at homeless every single year mm -hmm. and have a show for it. So those are my two big issues right now, I think, facing our city. And of course, our revitalize, revitalizing our, our downtown business core. Again, COVID, COVID did a number on us. But... <laughs> All the, all the uprest and the rioting and the looting and the burning last summer uh, that caused still quite a few stores around Seattle to have plywood up in their windows because they're fearful of the next uprising and mm -hmm. the police won't to respond and, and be there to protect them. So I want to revitalize our downtown core, 
get these plywood boards off the window, open it up for business, be prepared for our next tourist season. Our tourist season was canceled last year. It's canceled this year as far as the cruise ships. When mm -hmm. those cruise ships come back and the tens of thousands of visitors come back to Seattle every summer as they do and spend a hundred million dollars in Seattle economy, mm -hmm. we want to be prepared for that. And I know we can do it. 